five seconds remaining, but he might be scared that the storm will be able to find him randomly in the jungle with another YOLO jump. He plays it safe. The time on Roshan, he's actually up again. There's a double damage available as well. This would be a very fast takedown for Speed you can get in there. Vichy Gaming. This is going to put them in a very, very good place. They spotted it out. And I don't know if Ion can get there in time. Are they? Oh, they're doing it. They're just looking around the base. They haven't smoked up. It looks like they will start to make some movements towards the pit, but this Roche is going to go down pretty damn quickly. Let's see. They should get it here. Ehome, they are making their way over, but it's oh how? Too much damage. Age just going the way of the anti mage. Quat will pick up the cheese. Do Ehome really want to fight into this one? Hanging around, smoked up in the jungle. How just ate a moon shard, by the way. So that was his yeah. next item. The reason he bought it was that they got the Aegis. Else he would have got an item to take. Ow, revealing himself in lane here. OTK, OTK wants to fight, and they'll go for Super, but Super gets the BKB out here. I think someone can any field to come out. There's the global silence as well. There was the Hex on Tara TK. How now with the Abyssal Blade onto YJ going to work. Yeah, that's, that's moving in as well. I don't think the Lotus Storm's going to save him. YJ getting loaded with just goes. Oh, he gets Lotus Storm back to Fairy. Manifold comes out. They're half five the kill. And now they're looking for more here. They want to find our TK. They should be able to find it. They will. Another kill for Hal. CTY zips away. TP's out. Will they be able to cancel it? No, they can't quite find the storm. But three for one there. They reversed Winter's Curse there, costing Fenrir his life, but I, I don't think he'll mind the fact that they still come out on top. And how now looks to take himself instead of Raxi from the bottom lane. Tier 3's already been taken in the mid lane. BG could very well look for two, and E home, they are three heroes down, none with buyback available here. It's not looking great for the side of E home, and maybe. Just made it. They need something spectacular. This might be it. Hex onto Hal, but Warren Punch wants us on CCY in this Hex as well. There are the bats as well. CGY's dead. He can buy back. He can buy back, and he's going to need to potentially if he wants any chance of holding on. Rubik's going to be back up in 10 seconds, but still the gyro and the sanking down for 30. Fortification coming out. I don't know what Ehon could do now. They need a miracle. Nothing less. DDC. Snowball's going to be coming in his way with Super Blinking Board as well. The Glimpse as well bringing it back. The Snowball changing direction to DDC and DDC's going to go down. The Mega Help, we don't know. He's going to live for a bit of time. I just I know oh, with the Basil Blade on to CTY. Man avoid. It's all over. It's got to be. They're looking for Lanham as well. He's up and down, up and down. But he will finally go down for the final time. Double kill for Hal. Four heroes on the deck. Jar is now back, but they're still lacking the storm. The silence of the Ruby. It's GG. BG do it. They'll move on. And E home, go home. 7 0 in the main event. BG Gaming. I believe it's they ridiculous. Came, they came out of their group fifth, I think. They started in the lower bracket. They still have not lost a game here at the main event. They now secure top four. -er. Yeah, I'm sure the Atlas will turn. But nonetheless, VG's performance this tournament, as you said, the fact that they haven't dropped a single game in any of the series. Where is it top six? It's top something. It, it's, even, it's a hell of a lot of money they've secured themselves. I mean, VG so far. I mean, that performance as well. At the end of the, that series was a very, very close one, I kind of feel, as well. Both teams having to make big decisions, but VG, we see them here. What a performance. They ice, Ice, Ice in his old teammate Lennon. A little bit of cheeky bounce, cheeky, as you like to call it. Cheeky bounce indeed, and for some more cheeky bounce, we'll, we'll head over to the to the Archbishop of Banterbury, Red Eye himself, with the analyst. <laughs> uh, well done, Vicar of uh, Vicar of Pixels. He's finally got me back over there as well. Uh, great game, well played, Vichy Gaming, and of course, our congratulations to be home as well because they have had a very successful international tournament, but they unfortunately do finally fall. Well done to them. Um, just generally, your thoughts on the match, on the series itself, as well as the, the second game. Stop with you, Wager. I actually think that Fenrir got time to shine. In the second game, he played amazing. The times that he saved his teammates there, it's beautiful to see that not only FY is getting some glory here, but Fenrir also. Yeah, so. I, I have to agree, and I'd like also to mention a house performance. Obviously, you always shine when you're an anti-mage, and you, you're the one that gets the most pace, but I felt like he really, really stepped up his game today. Mm, okay. Winter. Yeah, I, I think he really stepped up his game. Like, compared to his previous games, he didn't really have good decision making, but this game, he was on point. Okay. I like the Lanham's Rubik. They almost got back in the game with a stolen snowball into the blink out, and he saved uh, the poor gyrocopter who didn't have his BKB. I thought he made some big plays on the Rubik, and of course, Fenrir was super selfless. I think at the end of the game, his score was 0 and 13. Ouch.
Talking of uh, good plays, there was a good play at 43 minutes. So let's uh, show you that one because that was towards the end of the game as well. And uh, pretty much confirmed Vichy Gaming uh, winning the game. So hopefully you can see that in just a moment. There we go. RIT County Sankey has got a load of yeah. to help against these hexes. And zip for from CTY straight on to Super Beginning. This is the fight where well. just jump in and try to go really Ascaral aggressive. Here. Get a stun yeah, and a silence on Winter Wyvern. So it takes a long time to break an OP, which means that Howe is also going ham here. But Storm is being controlled a lot in this fight, but he just fights back after the fight. Finally, the Winter Wyvern OP just turns the Storm against his own teammate. But this is such a clustered fight, and it's really even one person only died this far in. And even when Storm dies, he will instantly rejoin. They're guiding perfectly on the snowball. Like, yeah. Guiding from Vichy Game is insane. The way they saved Antimates with the snowball and also Wind Wyvern, it's so hard to bring down any of the course on the side of Vichy Game. I mean, he didn't even like run away right away. He was still staying, sitting back and trying to find a good timing to just come in and cut his team again. And here he just jumps in again and he's just trying to buy enough space for his team back. And he said F4 again. Like, he also saved F4 with the Grimmick Tip. Like, the plays from Tenor are actually insane as I mentioned. Like, he saved so many people and here the two I just can't go for it this risk has this point. desperate attempt and he has no mana after that as well and goes for the courier really greedy and that got him killed also I mean, he, he could have actually bought a BOT and actually come to the fight maybe that would have been a better play he maybe. had to go for it he ended up die backing because he didn't have any mana so maybe that would have helped it's easy in hindsight for us mm, absolutely a little bit of revenge for Ice 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 as well 12 months on from TI4 ROTK's team of course last year knocking him out so nice for him yeah, I think he played really well. I liked his item build of the Guardian Greaves because they actually had a lot of counterplay to the silence. You can just Guardian Greaves and a snowball, and then like two of your teammates are already safe, as well as the Glimmer Cape. So generally, we see like two or three people die during the global silence that time. Like, I don't think anyone died. Mm. Overall, uh, how do you. Uh, do you know what? Actually, before we do that, I want to get Winter's thoughts on e home and where, how far they've come. But before we do that, let's head down to Casey because I believe she is with FY right now. You are absolutely correct. Uh, we are here with FY, and Josh is going to help us translate. FY, congratulations. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I feel very happy, but also the emotions are a bit complicated. I understand that you had 21 assists, which is huge. How do you feel about that? And can you speak a little bit to the performance of your teammates as well? 刚才你是拿到了二十一个主攻，然后你对这个有什么想法？然后对你的队友有什么评价？嗯，这两盘包子和豪打都挺好的，然后我属于划水，然后感觉队友吧。These two games super and how played really well. As for me, I kind of just they kind of carried me. So thanks to my teammates. What about Fenrir? Talk about Fenrir a little bit. We all saw the friendship and the partnership that you have and the way that you play the games and the respect that you have for each other. How does that contribute to the team dynamic? Uh, uh, I and Fenrir, uh, since I've started playing professionally, he's the only support player that I've ever been teammates with. So, of course, our relationship is really good, uh, but there's nothing else other than that. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I, yes, yeah. we know. Yes, we know. <laughs> we know. We understand that absolutely. It's it's a closeness that helps to be on a team, and I I think we're all just astounded at the stamina that you've shown as a team. You have won so many games in a row. How do you plan on maintaining that momentum moving into tomorrow? Uh, <coughs> 因为每局都是胜四局，然后大家都是打过几年职业的人了，肯定是想很想拿这个比赛的冠军，或者说好成绩吧。嗯，大家就很想赢，然后调节自己团队，然后幸运队友。
because every game is a must-win game. So uh, we're all professionals. We've all been playing for a long time, and we all really want to win. So we just make the adjustments individually and as a team, and we believe each other as a team. Well, you've definitely made your mark, and people are taking notice. Congratulations. Thank you for talking to us. Josh, thank you so much for helping us out, and we will see so much more from them coming up tomorrow. For now, we'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, Casey. Yes, we will see more from them tomorrow. Um, a fantastic achievement for the guys. We know how good a team they are from last year and, of course, at several moments this year as well. But when you look back through the group stages, they won one game, one game, one series, if you like, in the group stages. And yet they've come into the lower bracket one game away from being eliminated in the very first round because it was a best of one. They've won that. They've come through the lower bracket again against Cloud9. They then had MVP Phoenix, who were on an absolute tear. And now they've beaten Eheim, of course, who already had beaten Secret. That's, that's some run already. And they've still got to go two more games before they get to the grand final. Can they do that? Strength when it matters. I don't know. I think they definitely can. They're showing their strength already. Yeah. It's it the mark of a great team. Yeah, and they haven't lost a single map in the main event so far. I mean, on the main stage. Yeah. Single map. It, it, it's an incredible run. That, can it take them all the way, Ben, do you think? Yeah, I, I think they've shown that they can adapt a lot, which is incredibly important in this tournament. And, uh, I mean, initially, they've, they've been just playing a completely different style than they were in the group stage. They've really grown as a team in this a uh, few weeks, even more than they have in the past five months. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and Winter, we were going to say just before we went out to FY, um, to talk a little bit about eHome as well, because they have, they've, they've brought a real sense of uh, emotion of, uh, in terms of their play through ROTK and really gone to town on this tournament, really put every, every maximum effort they could in and left us with some great highlights as well. Yeah, I think this game, there's no shame. They lost to an overall better team. They dra no one had like a clear advantage in the draft. I felt yeah. like it was just they lost to a better team, better decision-making, execution in team fights. And this is the Vici. If you ask everyone, this is the Vici, what we wanted to see and expected to see at TI. Absolutely, yeah. It's a, it's a good point. Uh, Ehome, of course, um, don't go empty-handed. Far from it. Still got plenty of, uh, plenty of cash in there from finishing in the top six as well. So, you know, great, great story for them as well because of obviously uh, being in the final at TI1 and then reforming in January, January this year. And they've come all the way to become top six in the tournament. That's an incredible run for them. I mean, even after January, I think they made another swap. They uh, did, yeah. They swapped, uh, it was Inflame for CTY during, I think, around March or April. I can't remember. It was yeah. after DAC. It was. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, it's incredible. ROTK, of course, as well, said that he wasn't going to play in TI, TR5. He wasn't going to do anything this year. And might, he might think about coming back at TI6 uh, and has ended up swapping into the team as well. So they've had a lot to go through in a very short period of time, but have performed really well. So yeah. congratulations to them. Uh, let's wrap up things in the lower bracket and the upper bracket, of course, with a look at the brackets today as well. As you can see, they're just popping up onto the screen right now behind us. The upper bracket is still to be completed, but the upper bracket final will take place tomorrow, which will be CDEC Gaming versus Evil Geniuses. Those two coming through semi-finals against LGD and E-Home. E-Home, of course, dropping down to the lower, having just been defeated by Vichy Gaming. So that, grand, that upper bracket final will be tomorrow. The lower bracket looks like this. We lost a champion or two early on. Newbie dropping out to MVP Phoenix, of course. Navi have also been dumped out. And now we're left with just... A couple at the top of the lower bracket, that is. E-Home now defeated by Vichy Gaming. And at the bottom, we'll see them tomorrow. LGD versus Virtus Pro. The last European hope. And who thought we'd be saying that on day four of the International 2015? None of you and not me. Definitely not me. No, no Seb's still very upset about all of this, <laughs> aren't you? I mean... I can tell. I am a bit upset, but on the other, on the bright side, Virtus Pro, they're a great team. They deserve to be there.